Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today, I'm gonna do a little overview review of the Rolleiflex 6008 Integral, and I'm gonna put it down because it's really heavy. First of all, uh, Rolleiflex is well known for the TLR cameras, but a lot of people don't know they made some very nice SLR cameras. One of them was the SL66, which is uh, very famous for having uh, that tilt uh, little um, you know, front standard. And another one was the 6008, which is an electronic camera uh, interchangeable lens mount and has an electri electronic use. So it has a bunch of stuff in it. And one thing that I'm gonna say firsthand is I've used this camera for a couple of weeks, so it's not a full review and there's, a, you know, the specs on this camera are massive, but I'm gonna just cover a little bit what I've seen, what I like about it, and uh, maybe if you should expect to buy it or not and how the images. There'll be images during the video, so hope you enjoy that. First thing you'll notice is that the camera actually has that extra body size, just like the Hasselblad ELM that we have in the back there, and you cannot remove that. So it does have a battery, and the batteries have a problem is they kind of die. So you might wanna get the cells refitted. Uh, you can do this at a couple of places in the world. I highly recommend that because they will hold the charge for longer. If not, you charge your battery, shoot a roll, and you have to reload the battery. The battery does have a little fuse, just in case something goes wrong. So just bear in mind that you might wanna have a couple extra fuses with you. And yeah, this camera basically is like a massive electronic uh, Hasselblad uh, or Rolly SL66, but uh, has a bunch of features. So a couple of the features that it has is a leaf shutter that goes from bulb to all the way to 1 500th of a second with the PQ lenses and you can go all the way to 1,000 of a second with the PQ-S lenses. The one I have is the PQ, only does 1 500th of a second. And one thing that I'm not 100% sure and I haven't been able to find in the, uh, in the guidelines or the PDF is if it would do flash syncing at 1 1,000th. If it does do that, that'd be awesome. If you're one of those photographers that does studio photography and likes freezing action, even though you can also freeze action with your strobes, which is how most people do it. The lenses are pretty much similar to the Hasselblad uh, cousin. So uh, you have like a 50 millimeter, I think you have a 40 millimeter, you have an 80, and there's a bunch of lenses all the way to a thousand millimeter Tessar F8. So you can check it out. They're not so popular to find online, so you might wanna get your camera with at least one or two lenses to start your kit. And the thing is, there was a 6008, there was a 6008 Integral, there's a 6006, so there's a couple models in that family and all uh, have a couple things that are interchangeable like prisms and lenses and I think even film backs. One thing about the film backs, the film backs are extremely useful as you can actually load the film uh, vice versa. It's like the same way one way than the other. It's like symmetric. So when you're loading the film, you don't have to move the empty spool to the other side like a Hasselblad, like your TLR, like your Pentax or anything like that you can just basically flip the insert and load a roll of film and you're good to go. So it's extremely fast to do. Another great thing and feature of this camera is the dark slide is built in to the back. So all you have to do is slide the dark slide open or closed if you're gonna change rolls, change backs or whatever. It's also interchangeable. So you can use 120 or 220, which is the same back. You can use the Polaroid or maybe probably a 70 millimeter film back, which is probably rare to see and hard to find nowadays. But yeah, you can do that with the backs, which is very nice. The back is exactly the same size as the, the body, so it fits nicely. And honestly, I found it to be really easy to load and easy to change. It does require you to set the camera down because it is a very big back, the whole thing opens. So you can't just change the roll kind of like on the go with Hasselblad. You pull out the insert, it's very simple. It's more like the hot, like the Mamiya RZ67, where you kind of have to open the whole back, take out the insert, but do remember this insert's pretty big 
as the camera is very tall. Another thing is the insert feels quite flimsy when you're loading and unloading your camera. Another thing that comes inside the insert, which is very interesting, it has a little slider to put the film reminder. You know that little paper you break out of a roll of 120 film? Well, you can put that inside the insert so when you pull out or put in the roll, you can put a reminder in there. The thing is that it's in there, you can't see what's inside your camera once you close the back. Then it has the frame counter on the basically magazine, so you can see S as in empty, and then one, two, three, four, all the way to 12, because this is a six by six camera that can shoot 645 if you have the 645 back. Then on the viewfinder side, we do have the chimney waist level finder, like always, but the metering in the camera is not on the prism like the Hasselblad. It's more inside the body. So the waist level finder has no special things. It just is, you know, a chimney finder with a little loop. I have found the loop is kind of hard to pull out with one finger. It kind of requires both fingers because I don't know, it's just like the torque. It has something to it that won't let you flip it open, at least not on my version. Then you have a normal 45 angle uh, prism and a 90, 90 degree angle prism if you wanna be looking just at eye level. I highly recommend you get the prisms if you're trying to shoot this camera sort of like eye level portraiture if you're not trying to get that under your nose kind of shot that a lot of people take. So if you're gonna be shooting like that, you might wanna get a couple of prisms or viewfinders for that. Of course, the prisms are pretty hefty because they have glass in it and they're just bulky for the construction, but just bear in mind, this is not a small camera that you're gonna be carrying around like I did, the body. And the body has a bunch of features. Like I told you at the beginning, it has the one 1,000th one of a sh uh, second shutter uh, speed if you're using the PQS lenses. It has metering in it. It lets you shoot in A mode, so aperture priority and also speed priority. So you can even use this camera both on the A setting on the lens and the camera, and the camera will basically shoot automatically. It'll choose depending on the light, what shutter speed and F stop it will pick for your pictures. I don't really like doing that, but if that's your kind of photography, you really run and gun, you can try to shoot like that and see how the results are and maybe implement it into your photography. As I said, it has a meter and the meter does a bunch of things. And again, I've only used the normal matrix metering, which is one of those that kind of evaluates the whole frame, but you can use spot metering. It has uh, different segments metering, which has like multiple spots. Actually, I read it on the instructions. I didn't use it, but it seems the kind of thing that back in the day when this came out, it was revolutionary. Nowadays, it's not so much something you wanna use and shoot like. But if you like it, I'm guessing that's probably the only camera out in the market. So yeah, it has different metering modes, which is awesome. And the top of the screen has a bunch of LEDs. So all these LEDs have all kinds of messages from the dark sides uh, shut, the metering has a little LEDs that show you underexposure, overexposure, f-stop that you chose, shutter speed that you chose. If you lock the A, uh, A aperture uh, exposure or the auto exposure, you can lock it. And for locking it, it has this grip, okay? So this grip in the camera is super convenient. It's easy to take off, easy to put on, and then it's really comfortable when you're shooting because you can actually kind of like use your fingers to move things. So to shoot, it's the green button on the front. To, for the uh, exposure lock is the back button on the back. So the one in the back, you can lock it and you can meter somewhere, recompose and shoot or you can even freeze it. So if you push forward, it'll freeze and it'll have a little LED on the top right corner that will tell you the aperture, I mean auto exposure, sorry, is locked. So that's super convenient for those quick run and gun where you don't wanna use a handheld meter and you're using the internal meter. From what I've heard and the pictures I've seen of my own, the metering is excellent. So don't doubt that you can go out with this camera and not use an external meter unless you really want to. One of the roles that I shot, I shot using 
the Raveni uh, light meter. So I'll probably put the notes on the pictures of which ones were metered with the Raveni meter and which ones were metered with the camera meter. Then you have a hot shoe on the side, kind of like the Mamiya RZ. It has flash sync at all speeds because it's a leaf shutter. It has mirror lockup, which is awesome for those no vibration kind of shots where you want to have the mirror go up. Of course, once you lift the mirror, you have to take the shot. You can't just, you know, whoop it for later and put it back up. It won't let you do that. Just like the Pentax 6x7 there or the Hasselblad, once the mirror goes up, you have to take your shot. It has the option to multiple exposure or single exposure. And the knob that has that says SE as single exposure, ME as multiple exposure. And when you twist it, which happens to me a lot on the Mamiya RZ67, this time it has like a little red indicator for you to know. And also if you hear the sound of the camera, the sound is very different. So for example, let me just do this right now. If I have it on SE, you hear the advance. If I have it on ME, you won't hear the motor advance. You see, it sounds a little less intense because of course the gears on the roll are not turning the, the roll around so you can do that multiple exposure. So yeah, basically I found this camera to be awesome. It's a little bit of overkill in 2020. I think people are you know shifting their mind towards a more mechanical cameras that can be fixed by normal mechanics, uh, guys that fix your cameras, you know, shutter speeds and oily, you know, blades and so on. This has a full computer microprocessor inside. Of course, it's not brand new and those kind of things are hard to fix. So if you get one and it fails, you're probably going to have to buy a second one for either spares or because the previous one will turn into spares. So bear in mind that it's an awesome camera. I really enjoyed it. It's really nice to shoot. It eats through rolls really fast. I really do like the automatic advance and I use that on the Hasselblad there. And it's a feature that I think a lot of people don't realize how fun it is because when I'm out shooting my kids or a scene, I'm one of those that I don't think one shot will do it. So I usually do two to three shots to get the moment that I like, even though it's medium format and it's gonna make you bankrupt. But yeah, having that motor is like clunk, 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 clunk. One thing you won't be is unnoticed. So make sure that you're comfortable shooting who you're shooting because it will make a lot of noise. So everybody's gonna turn around and listen to your camera making that you know, robot not noise. So yeah, who's this for? It's for that guy that really wants the internal meter. It's for that guy that really wants all these special features like multi-exposure, uh, you know, all that metering that has different options, the grip that is really comfortable and handy. It's a camera you can carry without a strap, no problem. Uh, you want those quality lenses in all kinds of, you know, focal lengths. And it's a camera for that guy that doesn't want the classic Hasselblad because it is very much like, you know, the dark cousin of the Hasselblad ELM. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. The pictures for this were shot uh, throughout a couple of days. I shot HP5, TMAX 100, and some color film. I think it's 400H if I'm not wrong. I'll leave the results, but it's a stunning camera. I highly recommend it if you understand that it could fail on you at any time due to the electronics. And the most parts from this camera are a little harder to find and sometimes a little pricier because there's not that much of a market for it. So when you're buying a Hasselblad, sorry to mention it again, there's plenty of options because there was thousands and thousands of Hasselblads out there. A Rolleiflex like this one, probably because it came out on a later date, there's not that many. So when you're trying to buy a second lens or an accessory or something, you might find that it's on the catalog, but it's probably really, really hard to source. So yeah, Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this little review overview of the Rolleiflex 6008 Integral. It's not a camera you see every day. It's not a camera I've seen every day. And uh, yeah, of course, there's a lot of things that could be covered in this review that I probably left behind. If you do have one or you want one, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.